So in this video we will start looking at numerical solutions of linear uh, systems of equations. Numerical solution, so basically when we say numerical solution of linear systems we're of course talking about, uh, let's quickly familiarize, familiarize ourselves with the problem. So we're looking at ax equals b where a is as far as we're concerned, we're going to be looking at n by n matrices, n by n systems, and x and b are n column. So x and b are n column vectors. So there, for the sake of the next several videos on this topic, we will be assuming that a is the form of an n, it's an a, n by n matrix, and of course um, x and b are uh, n column vectors. So in general, um, we also will be assuming that A is non-singular, um, and that means um, A is non-singular means uh, quickly that just to uh, tell you determinant of A is not equal to zero, so it's non-singular. It also means, of course, uh, that A inverse exists. So um, we're going to be assuming that A inverse exists. So I mean, A is non-singular means its inverse exists. So we should have no issues, for instance, uh, writing the system as x equals a inverse b. However, um, uh, we will also warn very uh, sternly against using the inverse for solving systems of equations because um, the inverse itself is a very expensive calculation. Um, also, when we when we talk about numerical solutions systems or uh, numerical solutions of linear systems of equations, one has to keep the idea in context. And the context is that we're not talking about small three by threes or two by two little dinky baby problems. We're talking about minimum hundred by hundred or uh, thousand by thousand or a hundred thousand by hundred thousand systems, where efficiency is extremely important, where each arithmetic operation count is. Uh, is expensive, can be potentially expensive. So therefore, we have to look at, uh, we have to look at all these aspects and therefore look at efficient, powerful, quick, fast, stable, accurate methods. Now, um, so obviously uh, the inverse doesn't fit in that category. Furthermore, we, we're not just talking about single systems. In fact, we can be talking about um, where here xi is in fact a vector. There are, there are i vectors. So basically you're trying to solve i different problems, where i could be from 1 to m. So it means that there is one system, I mean quickly here, would be ax1 equals b1, that's an entire system. ax2 equals b2, that's an entire system, and, and it's to be solved. Now it may seem attractive, for instance, that if one had the inverse, ah, it's simply a matter of, it's the same a, of course, in all of these systems. So it's, some, it's a matter of just calculating a inverse times b1, a inverse times b2. We still warn against using um, uh, this, uh, although it may seem attractive, but it has lots and lots of problems, which we will slowly uh, uh, explain as we go along this particular topic. Furthermore, another important thing to keep in mind is that anything involving the determinant is not to be used for solving systems of equations. So for instance, uh, things like Kramer's rule. Now, Kramer's rule is attractive mathematically. It's a, it's a nice method, it's an elegant looking technique, it's a smart idea, but it's very expensive. And, and it is very difficult to replicate it when you are tr solving uh, extreme, you know, the sub-matrix concept is very difficult to manage if you're talking about large systems of equations. Now that's okay if you're using a three by three or maybe a four by four, even a five by five up to 10 by 10, it's, 10 by 10 is a lot, but three by threes to five by fives are not so bad. You can use Kramer's rule and it's not so bad. However, once we get larger systems, it becomes very cumbersome to calculate. Plus, it has a myriad of problems with calculations, multiple calculations, which can, of course, um, you know, a uh, round-off error can grow significantly in uh, such methods. So it is to be avoided, and you will not see this um, in any of the videos that follow on this topic. Furthermore, uh, some other things to keep in mind um, when we talk about um, uh, upper triangular matrix, so there is something called an upper triangular uh, matrix, okay. Now, I'll quickly revise this for you. An upper triangular matrix, uh, usually represented by the letter U, uh, is a matrix that has all entries. Um, it would be that the AIJs, okay, are 
equal to zero for i greater than j. So i greater than j. That means the uh, i is the row and j is the column number. Okay, so that means that when your row number is bigger than the column number. Essentially, upper triangular means basically the following. So you're talking about, say, for instance, um, A11, A12, uh, and so on up to A1N. Okay, and then you have 0 all the way down, and then you have A22 all the way down to here, A2N, and of course, ANN. And these are all zeros down here, okay? So, and all of these, and all, and uh, well, this is just uh, there's no dots there. Sorry. So anyway, so what we're when we talk about uh, when we talk about an upper triangular matrix, we're talking about a matrix that has uh, non-zero entries up here, okay? That's an upper triangular matrix. When we talk about a lower triangular matrix in the similar way, we use the letter L for it. Uh, L and L is such a matrix that in this case it's the opposite so Aij is equal to 0 for i less than j. The lower triangular matrix and the lower triangular matrix is one where you have zeros up here okay and everything down here is all non-zero so that's n1 and all the way to nn so this is a lower triangular matrix Okay, um, a diagonal matrix D is something that has only non-zero diagonal entries. Well, not all of them necessarily, but most. Uh, mo but what we're saying is off-diagonal entries are definitely all zero. Okay, so that's what it looks like. So you can see here that the only entries that we have that could potentially be non-zero are on the diagonal. So such a uh, so AI here we're saying that AIJ is equal to zero except um, when uh, well it's equal to zero for I not equal to J so uh, for, so for along the diagonal is the only place where you'll find a non-zero entry um, so those are some preliminary quick ones that quick things that you need to keep in mind uh, which we will be of course looking at uh, all together in this in the coming uh, videos. Uh, so uh, uh, we'll stop here.